Okay, I've reached a bit of an impasse with my build here for financial reasons, so I thought I'd go ahead and fill you guys in on what's happening with the Mustang so far. I know I haven't made a video in a while, but there's a reason for that. I've been pretty busy, and uh, this is one of the many things I've been busy with. So that's a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. Now, as you can see, uh, that's not a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6, that's the stock 3.7. And it's uh, it's about ready to come out. It's, uh, you know, it's unbolted from everything it needs to be unbolted from except for the trans itself. So just pull a couple bolts from the uh, bell housing and yank her out. That's why I got the engine crane here. Why haven't I done that yet? Well, there's really no reason to right now because, as you can see, the 3.5 EcoBoost, which was never sold with a manual transmission, doesn't have a flywheel or clutch, it just has the automatic transmission flex plate, which obviously has to go. Now, I would use the uh, existing clutch and flywheel on the Mustang, but it is the stock dual mass flywheel and clutch with 50,000 miles on it. Probably not uh, the best idea, especially considering that that clutch is not made to handle anywhere near the torque the EcoBoost is going to put out. So. Uh, lightweight flywheel because the dual mass is incredibly heavy and just basically shit in every way and uh, a, a new clutch that's capable of holding 500 plus wheel torque uh, That's gonna have to come before I really put the engine in because otherwise I'm just gonna have to pull it again Sometime soon or drop the trans either way. It's just it's more work than it's worth So waiting on that then I'll be able to put the engine in originally. I was planning to use this monster ball bearing turbo I believe it's a 67 and uh, that was that was the initial plan, and I already had a kit for that. I bought the kit. I actually installed the kit. I did everything but get it tuned. I kind of changed my mind on that just because my goals with the car changed. Originally, it was supposed to be kind of uh, just you know all around street performance car. Right now, I've changed my mind quite a lot. I just want it to be a really good, solid, fast, reliable daily. And a, a monster turbo on a stock bottom end is really not what you want to do with the. Uh, with that goal in mind. So the advantage of the 3.5 is uh, despite these, I'll show you how, how tiny these turbos are, they're really tiny. Despite these tiny little KO3s, how well you can see that, there's a KO3, so obviously, you know, not very big at all. I can't even get three fingers in there. Um, <laughs> it's a small turbo. And uh, the advantage to that is there's like no lag, like literally no lag at all. They spool up for 2000 RPM and they're at full torque in the low 2000s, I think like 2200 RPM on the stock tune. Uh, this is obviously a very, you know, standard uh, 3.7 liter V6 motor. They make good power for sure, probably over 300 wheel horsepower with the mods I had on it. But uh, this has a lot more tech and is a lot stronger. It's direct injected obviously, which means it's actually higher compression despite being boosted. So the goal is uh, these little stock turbos, I would like to upgrade these to uh, Cavilli turbos, which is about a $2,500 upgrade, but should be good for a lot of power. I'm not exactly sure how much, but on the F-150, they were making well over 500 wheel horsepower. In this application, it should be pushing six. So uh, that would be great. Of course, uh, with direct injection, upgrading the fuel system is a little bit more complicated than that. I would need a, a, an aftermarket fuel pump more than likely. and uh, well, actually, no, I could probably use a booster pump on the fuel pump and an air motor fuel pump controller, which, by the way, is the plan right now, is a stock fuel pump with an air motor fuel pump controller. But um, these injectors, which you can't actually see because it's direct injection, but uh, if you want to replace those or upgrade those to, uh, to a higher capacity injector, it's about $2,000 for the set, so that's not cheap. But I have this, which is my stock 3.7 fuel rail, I've seen some people take that and get some bungs, put them up here, and uh, just have them run as auxiliary fuel injectors, which is another option. So I'm, I'm going to keep those around just in case I want to do that. But again, adding complexity, and uh, it's not really the goal here. So um, one of the cool things about this swap, though, is these motors are very closely related. The block casting is damn near identical. Besides the bore, that's the really the only difference in block casting itself, uh, which means I can uh, I can reuse the factory engine mounts, and it will bolt up to my transmission. So that's the advantage of using the uh, 3.5 EcoBoost over say 
I don't know, a 2JZ. Everyone wanted me to put a 2JZ in it when I told people I was swapping it. I don't know why. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the big advantage with the 3.5 EcoBoost, plus the fact that it makes unbelievable torque and power for a factory motor and uh, with with just a tune and should be quite reliable. Um, so you know, big plus sides there. I'll have to run it with a uh, standalone ECU from Ford Racing. They sell a control pack that allows you to bolt up any of their uh, any of their crate engines to pretty much any application you want. So I got one of those. Well, I don't have one of those, but I need to get one of those. I'm going to get one of those in order to run this thing. Um, i got to figure out some little plumbing issues here and there. It should be a pretty direct, or not direct, it should be a pretty straightforward operation of getting this all hooked up, but there are a couple of things that need addressing. Most of it from there will be uh, just figuring out the control pack and getting all that running. There are a lot of little things, of course, but those are the those are the, the heavy hitters. I'm going around to the trunk of the car. I need a little bit more space in the engine base, so I'm doing a battery relocation, which I've already started. I ran the positive cable. I haven't cut the other end or crimped on another connector um, or crimped on another terminal because uh, I don't really know exactly where I'm going to mount um, the junction box in the under the hood in the front. So I'm going to have to wait for that. And uh, I got these made up pretty easy. Just crimped on a little terminal and bolted on a terminal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they look pretty nice. I like them. And, uh, you know, I'll put some heat shrink on there, make it all look fancy and whatnot. And the battery box is just going to go right up in this corner. Wow, that's heavy. I guess it's got a lot of cable in it. Just go right up in that corner. There'll still be a good amount of boot space, so that's nice. All right, so uh, some suspension work has been done. Uh, I need new brakes. Obviously, those are stock V6 brakes, and they are decent, but not great, uh, especially for a high horsepower application. But I got Kony shocks and struts. Um, STRT is nothing too fancy. The reason they're STRTs uh, is because I got a great deal on them. They were open box, so good deal on those. And uh, BMR lowering springs, street lowering springs, because this is a street car. Um, you can't actually see them, but under here, or well, right here, but under here, is uh, GT500 strut mounts, because they're 2005 to 2010 struts. Uh, so that's, that's all good. And around the rear, there's quite a lot of cool stuff to see. All right, um, I don't know if I've ever shown you guys my suspension in the back here, so I'll just have to give you the full rundown. We've got BMR lower control arms. Well, I'm just I'm gonna stop saying BMR because everything is BMR under here. But uh, we've got relocation brackets for the lower control arms. We've got a full watts link, and no way I'm gonna get this on camera. Well, actually I might. Okay, let's. Uh, Oh, Ford Racing bump stops. And there we go. Yeah, that is a uh, BMR up control arm and bracket. And it's adjustable, so I can reset pinion angle because I don't think I've ever shown you guys underneath the car. But uh, the stock V6 drive shaft is basically just shit. Um, it's, uh, people say it's two piece, but it's not actually two piece, it's one piece. But it's got an expansion joint in the middle, which is really shitty, uh, or a slip joint, or whatever you want to call it. But I've got a 4-inch aluminum drive shaft under here, with a uh, Bluefish Racing shifter support bracket. That actually, uh, if you look up there, actually you can't see jack, but um, if you could, you would see that that connects to the shifter, because it's a semi-remote mount shifter. That little yellow, uh, actually you can't even see that, can you? You can kind of get a faint idea of it. There's a little yellow uh, arm right there that goes to the remote mount shifter. Kind of shitty, but that's the that's the MT82 for you. All right, I'd like to do some more stuff up front because the EcoBoost motor is going to add a little bit of weight with its turbos and whatnot. So I'd like to do a K member and lower control arms, tubular, but uh, you know, money that's a thing. So might not be able to do that at this time. Go around to the trunk of the car. I need a little bit more space in the engine base, so I'm doing a battery relocation, which I've already started. I ran the positive cable. I haven't cut the other end or crimped on another connector um, or crimped on another terminal because uh, I don't really know exactly where I'm going to mount um, the junction box in the under the hood in the front. So I'm going to have to wait for that. And uh, I got these made up 
pretty easy. Just crimped on a little terminal and bolted on a terminal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they look pretty nice. I like them. And, uh, you know, I'll put some heat shrink on there, make it all look fancy and whatnot. And the battery box is just going to go right up in this corner. Wow, that's heavy. I guess it's got a lot of cable in it. Just go right up in that corner. There'll still be a good amount of boot space, so that's nice. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the build so far. Um, all right, now I guess we'll quickly talk about uh, where things have gone, because I don't have the Sabru anymore. And uh, let's see, I traded that for a motorcycle, which I sold to get this. And I also sold that for, or also traded for, uh, this truck, which is right now my daily. But right now I need to sell that so I can get uh, get more money to finish the Mustang. <laughs> and this is going to be my new daily, which is uh, my new 5.0 Fox. So that's cool. It ran at one point. I don't know if it runs right now. It kind of decided not to start yesterday, so hopefully that was just a temporary thing. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. I'll uh, I'll be dating that for a little while, and I got it for like sixteen hundred bucks, so I can't complain if it doesn't run great. But uh, the plan is that I'll daily that for however long I need to to get this done, and then once I get this done, I'll either sell it or just go fucking crazy with it and you know make it a drag car because it's a fox body. You know that's what that's what it's made to do. That's what it's good for. All right, so that's about all there is. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And thank you for watching.